Another weekend, 2024. Are you ready? Yeah! Absolutely not limited to, and if I ever say something you like, make some noise. Rumble Cat 3! Woo! The Predator! House! Woo! Night of the Creeps. Yeah! yeah. yeah. Today joins us as a co-writer and director of Monster Squad. Please welcome Fred Decker! Woo! Black and white 
comedy movies of the 30s and 40s. Um, Marlon Hardy, Adam Costello, uh, The Little Rascals, uh, the, Hart the Marx Brothers, all of them. And at some point or another, I had this notion, what if The Little Rascals met the Universal Monster? <laughs> And um, it, it came very quickly, actually. I went to my buddy, Shane Black, who at that time had not written any screenplays professionally. Um, but I, uh, he was a dear friend of mine. He's very funny, very you know, whip smart. And he said, Shane, I want you to write a script with me. And it's The Little Rascals Meet the Universal Monsters. And it's called Monster Squad. And so we wrote the script on spec, which means nobody paid us a dime. We just did it. And we put it on the market. Um, I had made one prior film, Night of the Creeps, which did not do well, but I guess some people liked it. Yes! Really? <laughs> More now than then, trust me. <laughs> and uh, so I had, a, I had a film under my belt, and uh, we, we, um, I, I went to my hero at that time, who is a producer, writer, director, and Peter Hyams whose work I revered, and I said, and I, I, I had met with him and we had a relationship, and I said, Peter, I've got this script, Shane and I have written it, I would love for you to produce it, I would like to direct it, what do you think? And I gave him the script, and he took it to market, and um, we made a deal to make a movie, much to my shock and surprise and delight, I suppose. <coughs> our, our delight as well, obviously, too. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, so as far as the casting goes and stuff like that, um, how was it for each of you and Fred? Feel free to kick on in since you had something to do with all that. Well, you know, it was the star vehicle. You know, nowadays and, and for many many years now, it's really like who's the who's the star. And in this case, the premise was kind of the star, and obviously the monsters. So our first hurdle um, was I wanted to use the the designs of the original. Universal Monsters, because those are the ones that I fell in love with as a kid. And this is, this is to me, hilarious. We went to Universal with the script and said, we want to resurrect these monsters that you guys don't really do anything with except put them on coffee mugs at the Universal Studios tour. <laughs> they said, that IP means nothing to us. We don't know what we would do. That's, you know, thanks, but you know, no, we're not going to do that. And I said, okay, well, I guess we'll just make it ourselves anyway. So then it became the process of changing the monster makeups just enough that they wouldn't sue us. But honestly, yeah. I, honestly, I don't think they would have anything. They just didn't care, which uh, is very amusing to me. And I'm glad to today. today. Um, so uh, we made a deal with a company called Taft Parish, and we were off to raise. My friend saw this little tiny ad in Variety magazine. And he said, wanted to play monster male, very small, thin, anorexic type. <laughs> <laughs> and so my friend said, you should go for that. <laughs> and so like regular, the regular audition process, I went to Sony Studios. And I got there, and Fred was there, and he was arguing, or he had to get some intensive conversation with this woman. And he goes, just walk across the floor. So I walk across the floor, he says, he goes back to the conversation, he goes back, he goes, no, just like, no, walk across the floor, and this time drag your feet. And then he told me to do something with my hands. So I walk across the floor, drag in my feet, and I went like this with my hands. And he went back to the conversation, he goes back, he goes, as far as, as, far as I'm concerned, you got the part. <laughs> <laughs> so I went to my regular job, and I got a call from a studio, and says, hello, is this Mike Reed McKay? I said, uh, yeah. He goes, Congratulations! You got the part of the mummy in the Monster Squad. And I looked at my friend who was standing there and went, I said, put him up. And I started to stutter. I was trying to say, I'm not a screen actor. I'm not that And she said, We're going to take care of everything. <laughs> and don't worry about anything. We'll both Taft Heart and you just screen actors. You know? And she goes, Again, congratulations. This was my first professional job. I was never a film or anything. And going to a museum, I noticed that like, like in the 50s when I watched these horror films, the mummies were all always usually bulked up or tall. But real mummies were very small like I was. So I went to a museum and you know, at that time, 
Mummy did, like people were very small, and mummies were very small and thin, like I was. Yeah. So I felt like I could trade what a real mummy would look like. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I think for most of us in the human cast, uh, it was kind of a regular audition kind of process, I mean, with this uh, submission thing. Request her name is human, he's just dead. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> current human, I guess. Uh, you know, you, you go in and you audition and you come back and you meet everybody that makes the decisions and you know, you hope, you hope to get these roles. And, and we were all kind of actually kind of all working, kind of auditioning all the time actors and this was something that was very interesting. And, uh, but one of many of that week probably, you know, that we were all kind of reading for. We were all much younger, of course. And um, so it's, it's just kind of that regular go in, audition, call back, get back, and like you say, you get that call, congratulations, you got that movie. Uh, personally, with my instance, is a lot of people may or may not know, they've heard the story a million times. I never auditioned for the role of Sean Connery. And because of my body of work leading up to that, I was always kind of like the cool kid with a lot of hair product and maybe a leather jacket. So I auditioned for Rudy. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Which is maybe why I didn't get Louie. So probably uh, but then I think the other, you know, didn't hear back. I did callbacks, you know, met meetings multiple times. And then time went by and someone called and said, hey, you know, you got cast in that movie you read for, Hunt the Monsters. And I said, great, that's awesome. I said, well, not, not the role that you, you read for. And usually in this business, that's not good. Because they liked you for something, but usually get a much smaller part. And I knew the script at this time. And I was like, man, the only other kids in this movie are the asshole. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, damn, I'm an, e I'm, I'm an EJ? <laughs> and they said, no, 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 you got cast as the lead in the movie. I'm like, no, damn it. <laughs> Rudy was that cool character. He gets the jacket, he kills all the monsters, and he gets the girl, like he gets, he does get the girl with you, it happens. And I'm like, that's the cool character. And they go, no, 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 Andre. He's the lead in the movie, this is a good thing. And I was like, damn it. Rudy was like the really, but, so apparently someone in that mix, like I always say, thankfully or fortunately enough, remembered me from my uh, Rudy conversations and said, can we take the hair product out of his hair, give him a terrible haircut, put him in clothes that aren't Rudy clothes, and uh, could he be Sean Crenshaw? And someone said yes. And um, then I showed up and tried to do it. <laughs> and a couple years later, you gave us this wonderful documentary. Well, that's you to go. Thank you. Woman's at Nards, if you haven't seen it and you, if you like this movie, you'll love the documentary. Yeah. Which, by the way, is coming out on a special Blu ray edition next month. <laughs> oh, nice! From King of Order. Okay. Who has actually seen the documentary? Sorry. Yeah. Since we're yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Who has not seen the documentary? It's okay. It's okay. Yeah, awesome. <laughs> For those of you who have seen it, there's 60 minutes of extra features on this one. Nice! <laughs> Shameless plug, sorry. <laughs> Anybody else want to chime in? It's passive play. What? Brian? What am I? How am I? What am I? What? What's my? I, I checked the chat. Oh. I don't remember. So Is this thing working? <laughs> <right. laughs> um, that's fair. I was on, uh, I, was, I was working on another production called uh, Kids Incorporated. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it was, it was a regular, regular audition. It was brand and, uh, but I read the, uh, the description of character, Rudy Halloran, and uh, cool kid smokes, blah, blah, blah. Got it. Leather jacket, I went in, what you're seeing in the film is exactly what I looked like when I walked into the audition. Yeah. It was Fred, it was Shane, it was Penny, it was the Dennis and Griffin. Walked in, 
I asked, I saw a packet of uh, Marlboro Reds in Shane's pocket. I'm like, can I grab one of those? <laughs> and Shane was like, I don't know if we're supposed to give this kid a cigarette. <laughs> and Fred said, we wrote it into the script. <laughs> so I, and then I lit, and we did the scene, and I walked out, and there was about six or seven other kids in the uh, audition room, and I went, you guys are fucked. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah, that's what they had. They had to speak. Oh, and I, I got it. Audition <laughs> <laughs> psychology. So, I got a call from my agent and said they want to see you for this movie. Play the father of the lead kid. So I walked in, and I had not read the script. And the executive producer, Peter, looked at me and he said, do you know why you're here? I said, no, no, other than to meet on this film. He said, that's not why you're here. My wife loves you. <laughs> you just starred in a series where you play the ultimate father and she thinks you should be the father of this film. You want to play the part? I said, sure. He said, it's yours. That's it. Nice. <laughs>
related to me in ways. When Rudy killed me and shot me, he, he, he said, take this band-aid breath. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I don't know told about scratch, no idea. He said, go on T whatever. Came back on Google. I bought it and I got it. Oh no, that's a band-aid breath. <laughs> <laughs> and then the second one reference to me was when um, the little boy sees his mummy's in my closet. <laughs> Two reference to Mine was during the fight when Wolfman sort of eats me up in the factory and Sean comes to my rescue and smacks him in the head with a baseball bat. I take a stick of dynamite and stick it in his pants and Sean shoves him out the window and I say, suck on this. <laughs> sweet. There's a lot of great lines in this movie, and I don't know if they intended to be quotable or not, but it worked out that way. And I've got a few which I like. If I had to pick one, it's kicking in the guards. <laughs> Look, Shannon and I wrote this script, um, and uh, if I tell you what my favorite line is, then that will make all the other lines in the movie feel bad, so I'm not going to do that. Oh gosh, um, I guess I love, obviously, don't be chicken shit, only, just because it's a good life motto, also. Um, also because you're five years old. <laughs> yes, and I was definitely afraid to curse, but I also, Really, I love the scene that I have with Mary Ellen where I'm asking about monsters and yeah, outside. And my parents have just gone through a divorce, so the line where I say, are you gonna yell at him? And she's like, I love your father. And I'm like, no, Sean. <laughs> always really resonated with me, so I also really love that little exchange. So. Mm -hmm. That's her favorite is it? You wanna say it again? And there's a Monster Squad poster next to the bed. And I was like, that is fucking 
Then they made a TV show of it, and I'm like, where the hell's all those? They didn't do it. They didn't show it, right? It's in the comps. They couldn't clear it. There's like a there's a movie about a kids I forget what it's called I'm gonna totally butcher it but it's like a water park in the, the way, summer way the way way back and there's a kid wearing a Stephen King rules T-shirt and I remember watching it and pausing it and being like holy shit <laughs> is there a reference in Chuck or something like that uh, in this in script yeah. And I can't remember the, it's, it's not really, it's kind of a monster whatever since we see it, but there's a, isn't it a John Lovitz movie where the Gilman is in the background of the John Lovitz yeah. movie? And what about, is it the Blackberry movie? Isn't that John Lovitz? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the Blackberry movie, there's a, the, 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 the poster, yeah. 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 which is fairly yeah. common. Yeah. People love this shit. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, what's your name? Um, my name is Daisy, and my question is, um, what is your favorite character? But there is one exception. The character cannot be yourself. Oh. Yeah. Um, yeah. Aside from yourself. She knows us in our sister's act. Still gonna say me. <laughs> Frankie. My favorite character is little Michael Faustino, who is the little boy. Yeah. Yes. Because day one we bonded. Mm. And he held my hand and he looked at me, are you okay, mommy? And he was like, he was just like the bestest, bestest friend. Yeah. He's very cute. I wanna, I wanna talk, the monster squad itself is my favorite char character. And I wanna go back to your statement. When I think about this movie, 20 years ago, I thought it was dated. Uh, I thought it was a, a fantasy that really didn't mean very much. Because I had people coming up to me who signing, I had a kid five years old who was wearing a chasing mask. And I said, oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> that kid identifies with the darkest side of everything. And the world is going that way. But recently, I had Andre and my grandson invited me to a screening when I was 82 years old on my birthday. And I got to look at it again. And I came out and I thought to myself, this monster story, it represents, these kids represent the best that is in all of us. That you can live up to fighting the dark side in you and you can transcend the dark side. And we are on the eve of an election where I say to you, transcend the dark side. Woo! The monsters. Woo! <laughs> Hard to follow. Uh, look, honestly, to Two of my favorite characters in this movie are the two cargo pilots. But if you gotta wind it down, it's the hero of the movie that saves the world, which is Phoebe. I mean, that, <laughs> what a character is that? Because uh, we all didn't get it done, she did. And uh, of course, actually, it's not is Phoebe, but Phoebe as a character in and of itself is what you hope to step up and not be scared of the monsters and actually get it done. It's a great job. I like a museum employee who's <laughs> about the, the fact that the mummy has left the museum and, and Steven's character says, you know, do you walk away now? How do you, where, where do you go? And you, you think you walk away? He goes, I don't know. No. Oh, sure. Museum employee. <laughs> so I have always had a really soft spot for Stan Shaw's character, for the um, the partner of uh, Saber. Is that his name? <laughs> named by Shane. He's named after one of the uh, authors of the Destroyer novels. Um, I always he's performing. A huge response. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
Um, his performance was always so fun and funny to me, and I always just really loved that character. Yeah. A great dad. A great dad. And I think my other character that I love so much is me. Give <laughs> 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 me another take and just do it that. It's funny, um, on the page, this character was not my favorite character. But once I saw the movie, it was me. She's just so adorable, and it, well, that's what I meant to say. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> All right. She's so adorable, and she's still adorable. She's the hero. Great question. Thank you so much. Hi, what's your name? Camille. Hi, Camille. Will there ever be a monster squad too? This movie did not do well in the <laughs> Thank you for discovering it after all these years. Um, the fact of the matter is if somebody called me and said, we want another one, um, I would seriously think about it. Yes! Woo! <laughs> and the good thing about monsters is that they can be brought back to life. Yeah. <laughs> Great question, thank you. Hi, what's your name? Justin. 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 I'm gonna add. <laughs> if there was Monster Squad 2, what would you think it was about? <laughs> 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 so, so, so Steven's line is, so you're saying the mummy got up and walked away by itself, and then the uh, museum guy goes, what's the museum guy say? It's a great line. I just love this museum guy. Did you take him? Did you take him? He goes, no, I, no, no. He goes, I would have seen it. <laughs> um, until we're there, it's tough to say, but um, I think everybody would be back. You know, Dracula's in the vortex. That doesn't mean he's dead. Um, Frank, also in the vortex. <laughs> you, you guys, you just gotta accept that Ryan's gonna keep doing this gag. <laughs> stay, well, stay tuned on that. Great question. Okay, we have just time for one more. So, hey, what's your name? Yeah. What's your name for us? Everybody has a favorite part, but what's your favorite part? Favorite part. I'll jump in. I love the last 15 minutes. It just it, it comes to life. It's got energy. It's got it's fun. It's spooky. It's action packed. I'd say the last 15 minutes is my favorite part. Yeah. Yeah. I like the part uh, where Sean is trying to convince his father to go to the drive-in <laughs> to see Groundhog, what's the number? Groundhog Day Part 12. 12. <laughs> By the way, this was before there was a movie with Bill Murray called Groundhog Day. Yes, yes. We were making fun of the fact that there were every possible version of a holiday turned into a horror film back then. We were making fun of that. And uh, so that's what happens. I think within the film that you're watching, there is a very heartfelt version of what's happening to a family. And that scene particularly um, is kind of
kind of special. You kind of watch it in a particular way because it is, you know, a father and son trying to figure out their relationship. And then when Sean Crenshaw says, No way! That's my favorite line of all time. <laughs> so Andre and I like to uh, talk about that. He likes my, over, my overzealous no way. No um, But we've all been there. We haven't been able to get the five bucks to go to the movie with our friends, right? We've all been there. Uh, that's a great scene. I'll jump in and say, again, my, I think my favorite scene in the movie is the cargo plane. It it sticks out, and those guys are hilarious. You stay here, and I'll go make spooky sound. <laughs> I think my favorite part is the chase in the haunted mansion. Um, it's really cool where they're running, and the vampire bride is coming, and the thing, and the bugs, and the garlic, and the pizza. The whole sequence is just very cool. Pocket pizza. Pizza. It is very Scooby Doo, um, and I remember I was supposed to be in that part, but it was too late, and I had to go home. My baby, I hit my hours of time on set, and they were like, "She's not in it," and I was like, "Oh," and then I saw it, and I was like, "Oh," but it makes sense because I had to go get Scooby Doo. Yes. They, they, or, or they made that a fix. I don't know. You would know better than me. My favorite scene is. When Fat Kid <laughs> shoots the monster and they ask him, what's your name? Black. He cocks the gun and he says, my name is Horace. Yeah. 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 It speaks for exactly what I'm talking about. All your names are Horace. <laughs> Kill the monster. <laughs> yes. I need to say my favorite part was Okay, I was just like basically I approached the role as like even though I was scary to look at, I was just I was just a mummy. And so like I was like friends with all the kids and everything, and there was one scene that Ashley and I had, and she was in the back of a truck. And she didn't want to see me because my face was scary. And Fred told me, he said, Mike, do me a favor. Show her your lip. Go like that. And show that. And so I went in, I did that, and I went, he said, oh, Mikey. <laughs> and from that point on, she found out, and she had to scream. And she did the same like a trooper. And that was, that's how it, I solved the problem. She was reckless. Aww. And that was, and Fred got what he wanted, and it worked out. It was great. It was great. I think pretty much the ending could be, I have a few scenes that I actually like, but the ending would be um, the most challenging, um, picking up a, a little girl, five-year-old child, and <laughs> delivering that line. Um, <laughs> it was pretty challenging in a lot of ways, especially back then. So the line is, you have to cast Fred. You can't remember, you wrote it. This way, this way, I know I didn't say that. I ruined that. Okay. <laughs> 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 um, and the other scene that I liked very, very much was a scene actually with Frankie. Uh, sort of an intimate relationship between the two, and it was more Tom Noonan, who bless him, isn't here today. Mm. A wonderful actor. And, uh, yeah. Because it's the antithesis of what went on between Dracula and Phoebe, um, which was a much more dramatic, theatrical type of scene, and delicious to play. Um, I suppose the third scene that I think was great fun for me was just simply throwing cops around. <laughs> That's a and, you know, of course, that thing is, give me the ambulance, you bitch. <laughs> Did he say that on set? Because I don't remember it, and he says he did. 
he did it. I must have blacked out. Blacked <laughs> <laughs> out again. Gunner, what's your favorite scene? Oh, and Horace has the shotgun and shoots um, Swamp Thing. There you go. Yeah. yeah. Something about that kid was a hero, and then he triggers a gun and says, I'm not that kid, I'm a horse. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah.